So the very first thing you want to do if you're troubleshooting a vehicle that is overheating is make sure there is enough coolant in it. And heed the warning on the cap. You never want to open this up if the vehicle has been running and is hot because this that hot coolant can squirt out at you. So in this vehicle, we can see the overflow tank is here. There's the mark for full cold. If I shake this, we can see there's no fluid to that level. We can take the cap off and verify that. This is a 2005 Pontiac Sunbite, by the way. And we're going to fill this up to the full, full cold level, but again, not while it's hot. So there we see that's empty. I'm going to top that off up for starters. That may be the problem, but it's more likely to be a symptom of the problem where the engine is overheating. It's probably been getting so hot that some of that coolant is evaporating. So I've topped up the level of the coolant to the full cold level here. Good advice right here too. It's a sea owner's manual for coolant fill instructions. Always good to check your uh, owner's manual for exact instructions for your vehicle. And now that I've got this topped up and the vehicle is cold, I'm actually going to start it and leave my level off, uh, my cap off of this uh, tank here right now. I'm going to run the engine. I just want to see if it uh, sucks any of this coolant into the engine just to see what happens. Here's our temperature gauge in this vehicle here over on the left. Going to uh, keep an eye on this for a couple of minutes. Um, I want to see about our fluid. Now that uh, the re reservoir tank is full, uh, when our thermostat kicks in, what happens uh, when the thermostat kicks in, it'll let water flow through the engine. I want to see if, if uh, our level goes down and a lot of the uh, refrigerant gets sucked through the engine. This is something if you're doing this, don't go do something else while you're letting your engine heat up. You do not want to cook your engine. You want to be keeping an eye on this temperature gauge just as I am here now and uh, keep a close eye on that and we'll, it should go up around half and normally then uh, maybe a bit more then our thermostat should open up and let the, cool, the engine cool down. There's my temperature gauge over on the far left. I've only been driving a short time and it's already up to around half. So now I want to see what's going to happen as this car heats up. We've uh, topped up the coolant level so now it should stay in that range. But as I say, the low coolant level might have been a symptom of, of the problem and not the actual cause of the problem. Very careful working around an engine that is running. If you're nervous about it, don't do it. Shut the engine down and do the checks that way. Uh, in the case of what I'm doing here, I don't have any lunch, sleeve shirts on, uh, anything that could potentially get caught in the fan or any other moving part. Our fan is down in there. This is our um, hose radiator hose to the thermostat. Once this vehicle heats up, I'm just touching this now, and that's, there's no, I, I can tell by just kind of pressing this, there's no real fluid flow through there yet. It's kind of warm, but if the engine temperature starts to go way up, this hose should become very hot because the thermostat inside there should kick in and let the water pump pump fluid through this engine and of course to the radiator. Where it, where it will cool down. So hot refrigerant should be flowing through this hose once this engine heats up and the thermostat opens up to let this hose fill with the, the uh, hot refrigerant. I'm also going to be watching the fan. That should uh, kick in here at some point also. And I'm hoping that you can see that. I've got to take that shroud off there, but the fan is down in there. And that should, um, once the temperature goes high, the fan should also operate and start blowing uh, air through the radiator to cool the uh, refrigerant down. Okay, the temperature in the uh, on our gauge panel is indicating about up to halfway. I can still put my hand on the return hose for the radiator, but it is getting hotter. So I'm starting to think maybe our thermostat may be okay. But it's definitely getting hotter now. So I'm suspecting that the thermostat is operating 
and letting uh, the, the um, coolant cycle through the end. Okay, I'm starting to suspect we may have an issue with the fan here. I have turned on the blower motor. And although the blower inside the vehicle works, the vehicle fan did not come on. So, not eliminating anything yet, but I'm suspecting it might be an issue with the fan motor. And our uh, hose to the upper part of the radiator here is now so hot that I can't actually lay my hand on that for any length of time. Again, I'm not eliminating anything. Strange things can happen, thermostats can be intermittently working or whatever, but at the moment I'm thinking because that's hot, that generally indicates the thermostat is open and is let, letting the coolant flow through. But I am wondering about that fan and the control circuit for the fan. Okay, we're well above half on our uh, temperature gauge here. By now something should have kicked in to start cooling this engine now. Here's a return coolant hose. I can't even lay my hand on that, that's too hot now. I don't know if you can see that, but our fan is not operating. So it looks like this is going to turn into a video about troubleshooting a fan and the control circuit for I'm just driving slowly through town. We can see our temperature gauge over on the left is already starting to go down substantially. So that's a, uh, that's a symptom very common of a fan that's not operating. When it overheats, when you're idling in traffic, it cools down as soon as you start to Okay, I pulled off the highway and now without the, uh, just sitting here idling and without the air rushing over the engine and cooling it down, this engine is starting to heat up real quick. We can see it's well over the uh, halfway mark here, temperature wise. So uh, as we discussed before, something should be kicking in to cool that, whether it be the uh, fan to cool the coolant, put air through the rad and cool the uh, coolant down, thermostat, whatever. We're going to pop the hood and have a little peek. Okay, that hose is so hot there now, you burn your hand up. I laid it on there for any length of time. And our fan, hopefully you can see that, is not spinning. So I don't want to do any damage to the engine. We're going to shut this down. And uh, as I said, we're going to do some tests and uh, check that uh, fan, see if it's operating, or the control circuit. So we discovered that our cooling fan is not coming on even when the engine is starting to get seriously hot. So at this point, if you haven't already got one and you want to continue troubleshooting, great idea to get a maintenance manual uh, for your vehicle. They're $30, $35, something like that. I know people get sick of me hearing me talk about them, but they're a great reference. Uh, Haynes, Chilton, something like that, they're all good. Um, so anyway, at this point, what I want to do first is check my electrical circuitry for that fan. Now this is a 2005 Pontiac Sunfire. In this particular case uh, it's very easy to find the uh, there's fuses in the vehicle compartment but there's also always always the bigger fuses and the fusible links underneath your engine's hood and in this particular case they're really well laid out. Um, I popped these out of here to get them off of this vehicle there's just a little tab over here on this side Flick that and one over this side that pops out that's about the first thing you want to do because that's a quick and easy fix and underneath there's our big fuses and we can just reference to the fuse that we're looking for in this case I was looking for the cooling fan fuse it's marked right there it's a 30 amp fuse and it's the top ones second from the right. So if we go down here, pop this out, much to my surprise this fuse is actually burnt out. I'm hoping you can see that. You can see the, the uh, little S shape in there. You can see where it's burnt. Usually things aren't this simple. What I'll be doing is replacing this. We'll make sure that the fan operates. But then we're going to keep an eye on it because we're going to be wondering, you know, <clears throat> might have been just a fluky one-time thing that this burned out or there may be some other underlying issue there. So I'm going to take this, um, get it replaced. This fuse should look, I'm going to pull the one here for the uh, ABS, it's a 50 amp. It should look like that. Hopefully that will come through. You can see that that's the S shape in there is one 
continuous units. That's where the current actually flows through. Current gets too high, that part burns and hopefully saves you from uh, burning out an expensive electrical component as in our case a fan unit. So off the auto parts I go, I'm gonna get one of these. Just back from the, my local auto parts store bought two of those fuses two dollars and ninety cents here in Canada. Again, little tabs on either side. There's a 30 amp. We're doing this with the engine shut off. As a matter of fact, we can hear that fan coming on right now. So I think we found our problem. There's our fan running and cooling that engine. Start the car, our temperature will still be hot. So there it is basically at the same temperature that it was when we put our fuse in. We should notice that starting to cool down fairly quick. I don't want to bore you with this portion of the video, but I think it is important to show you the symptoms here. So now we can see that gauge, that temperature gauge starting to drop already. This engine was getting quite hot, as we knew, and there the fan is running. So instead of heating up and going higher as it was before, now that the fan is running, the engine is cooling down. And if you're ever stu stuck in traffic, and your temperature gauge is going way up like that, one way you can dissipate some of that heat is to actually turn your heater on and the blower for your fan. It might, be, might get hot in the car, you might have to turn your windows down, but that'll dissipate some of, the, some of the heat as that hot coolant from your radiator cycles into the heater core, which is inside the, the vehicle compartment. It's like a mini radiator and it'll suck uh, some heat away from the engine blowing it through that mini radiator core. Maybe enough to keep your engine, engine from getting too hot, at least till you get off to the side of the road or something. Anyway, we can see that's cooling down. I'm just gonna idle here for a minute or so and we'll take another little shot at the temperature. Okay, we've been running for about another minute or so and we can see that the gauge has actually fallen below half. So the fan is cooling the engine down pretty quickly here.